We are really privileged to have Major Margaret Davis, who currently is Divisional Commander for the Massachusetts Division. I think she's been there about seven years. Um, she's of Panamanian descent. Her parents came over here um, and served in the States as officers. Um, she is really well known so soloist in the Salvation Army. Um, I've been privileged to work with her on a few events, and including ones where she sang at Royal Albert Hall and Roy Thompson Hall in Toronto and so forth. And she has an album out that I looked for this morning and couldn't find. <laughs> she has an album she did in the East. And uh, for many years, we had association both at Star Lake in the voice classrooms that we talk about with great affection those years, and also in the Pendel Division. So she's never been to CMI, um, but she's had that kind of tear to a music school, kind of Star Lake performance uh, kind of vocal school experience. So we welcome you this morning, Margaret, and we know we've got a lot to do this morning, so we'll let you get going there. So welcome. Great, thank you very much. Can you, everybody hear me? All good? Yeah, it's a real privilege and honor to be with you um, today to discuss a really important topic, a fun topic, a topic that is really close to my heart. Um, as you believe, I'm sure, singing is something that everybody can do. Um, music is a wonderful gift from God that gives us a way to express our thoughts and feelings. Uh, it gives us a way to express how we feel about him. And it's a way to share messages, messages about God and about what's going on in the world and what we're feeling. And I think singing in particular is, is the most natural form of musical expression, right? Because it all happens within our bodies. We don't need anything else to add to it. The vocal cords uh, vibrate and produce the sound. And then our lungs fuel the sound with air pushing up through our bodies. The, the throat, the neck and the head are our resonators. And the mouth and the lips are the, the vehicles through which the, the glorious vocal sound is, is released. And so everybody can sing, and a song can rise from every heart to bring joy and love, to express pain and longing, and communicate the things that, that lie in our hearts, to even spur people on to action, and lots of other kinds of wonderful things. And for soloists, um, this expression is very, very personal. It's a way for us to express our personal feelings and, and thoughts, and a way for us to personally take a stand about the things that we believe in, and the things that we want to express. So it's really a very exciting and, and, and a wonderful topic um, that we will be discussing today. Um, the Everything Singing book says this, whatever its sound, your musical voice is a part of the human spirit and the desire to sing seems to be an innate part of being human. So every Everybody does it. Now, some do it better than others, but everybody seems to want to sing. Um, a few other quotes that I like about singing. The total person sings, not just the vocal cords. Um, he who sings frightens away his ills. Can you relate to that? Feeling down sometimes, a song just brings you into another place. I don't sing because I'm happy. I'm happy because I sing. I can relate to that. And then uh, from Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, a famous American poet, God sent his singers upon earth with songs of sadness and of mirth that they might touch the hearts of men and bring them back to heaven again. And as Christian musicians, this is at the heart of what we're all about, expressing God's truth and God's love to the world um, through the gift of singing. In scripture, in the King James Version, I believe um, soloists and, and singing groups are referred to 119 times. And you will know that musicians and singers are part of the, the Levitical uh, 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 tradition. So they were priests um, offering up a beautiful offering of music unto the Lord. Two very uh, famous uh, uh, verses about singing, Colossians 3.16. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And then Ephesians 5, 
18 and 19, don't get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Amen. So that's what we are all about as Salvationist musicians. And to start our time off, I thought we would just offer a prayer up to the Lord. Lynn Ballantyne is a wonderful composer, a wonderful um, uh, singing uh, teacher. And he, many years ago, wrote a lovely tune, The Musician's Prayer. And uh, Jude, I'll ask you to just put that up on the screen now. We can read it together. It express, I think, expresses very beautifully, I think, the heart of the Christian musician that God would use our offerings to bless us and to bless others um, as we sing and enjoy beautiful music. So if we could just read that together, I will lead you and then we will move on into the rest of our class. So let's pray it together. Lord, may the words we sing have meaning. Lord, may the thoughts we bring have blessing. Lord, may the gift of music lift our hearts to thee and inspire our spirits more of you to see. Lord, in some way that only you can know, help each of us to trust in faith to grow. Serving you this way, sharing love this way, and bringing joy to others, may your joy be ours today. Amen. That's our prayer today, and I pray you that will be your prayer as you sing and do solos um, in every opportunity that God gives to you. So I know there are lots of different folks on this call. There are uh, very young people who are just starting out in, uh, in your soloist experience, and there are older and more experienced people who are fantastic vocal soloists. And so what I'm going to do today is share with you just a few things that have been helpful to me as I've tried to sing through the years and give glory to the Lord through that. So um, I have top 10 qualifications of the vocalist or the soloist. And if you would throw that up on the screen, we'll just talk about those very quickly. And I know some people are baking cookies and driving, so be careful. <laughs> so the top 10 qualifications of the vocal soloist. Enthusiasm. You have to be excited about singing and sharing the message of song. And people, through your singing, they need to catch that excitement and be ready to receive what you have to offer. So be enthusiastic about the act of singing vocal solos. Good pitch and rhythm. It's essential to um, adequately share the music as, as it's written. So to be accurate and to do what the composer intended you to do. Good pitch and rhythm. Imagination, music is about telling stories and sharing messages. So you should have the ability to imagine in your heart and your mind the story and, and then to convey it in the best way that you can through a wonderful imagination. Personality, God gives each of us a personality and um, a little bit of a spark is helpful. So if you're able to share that and draw people in, that will be great, that's great as well. I think I skipped one. In my, uh, Good health and hygiene, okay. Taking care of your voice is essential, so you need to rest, have proper nutrition, drink lots of water, you know all the things that you need to do. Sight reading and piano skills. Now you don't have to be a virtuo virtuoso pianist, but you should be able to have the ability to pluck out the melody line on the piano, which will be helpful to you as you strive to learn the music that you are preparing. A fine vocal instrument. God has given you a gift and it is on you to develop that gift that he's given to you to its fullest. Physical strength and coordination, as I said before, um, in singing you use your whole body to produce the sound and to convey the message. So uh, physical strength is necessary. Taking good care of yourself is a, a great part of being a good vocal soloist. And then self-confidence, very important. You have to believe in yourself and you have to believe that you can sing a solo and convey the message, sing it beautifully and effectively and uh, change lives through what, what you're doing. So if you've got these top 10 things or if you're working on them, you are on your way to becoming a very fine vocal soloist. Okay, so let's move on now to steps to learning a song. This is really 
um, what this class is all about. And there are a few things that you need to consider um, when you are choosing a song. And if you can throw that one up on the screen for us. If you are um, asked to choose a song yourself, these are the things that you need to, and you need to go back, I think, to, go back to two slides, Jude. There we are. You have to consider the meeting um, and the occasion that um, you will be singing at. Is it a worship service? And there are many different kinds of worship services, right? Is it going to be a holiness meeting, a morning worship service? Is it going to be a praise meeting? Um, are you going to be singing at a concert? Is it going to be a civic meeting, a luncheon or something like that, where you sing right before the meal or right after the meal at the very beginning? These are the kinds of things that you need to think, you need to think about when you are choosing what kind of song to sing. Next, you need to consider the congregation or the audience. Um, what are their ages? Are they young people? Are they older people? Is it, is it a mix? Is it a small congregation, a very large congregation? Is it a Salvation Army congregation or a community group? All of these things need to be considered when you are choosing a song in order to make it as effective as possible. I'll tell you a story. When we were Corps officers in Brooklyn, um, I was asked by one of our soldiers who was a teacher at the neighboring elementary school to come and sing for an assembly during Black History Month. So I love spirituals and I thought, wow, this is fantastic. I have a whole bunch of spirituals that I like. So she said, pick two and we want you to sing for these fifth and sixth graders. So I picked one that um, was a beautiful, lyrical, very high, operatic, gorgeous song. Um, and I sang that one. I started it. And these fifth and sixth graders started to laugh at me. They just could not get into a, a very high operatic kind of presentation. I kept going. The Lord gave me the, the, the strength to just keep going. And my mind was, was, you know, swishing around. I'm thinking, oh, what am I going to do next? Well, the second song, and they didn't know this song. This was something that they didn't know. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic, but they could not relate to the song at all. So the second song was a song that they knew. Um, it was uh, Swing Low, Sweet Chariot. And I said to them, sing this with me. And that one was a hit. So I learned a lesson there. You've got to know your audience. You've got to ask questions. It's not so much about you. It's about you conveying a message effectively to your audience. So huge lesson learned there. Um, you need to think about the theme. Most meetings do have a theme. It's the theme, faith in God, love, celebration. You wouldn't want to sing something very somber and serious at a, song, at, at, at a meeting that is all about celebration, celebrating God or whatever it is um, the meeting is about. Another thing to think about is the placement of your solo in the program. Is it at the beginning of the program? Is it preliminary music? Is it before the sermon, after the sermon? All of these things are very important to think about. And then the accompaniment. Live accompaniment, I think, is always best, but there are some fantastic um, accompaniment tracks that are available to us now. And those, of course, if done well, if the sound is good, if the balance is good, can only enhance a performance. So you have good choices there. Now, I didn't put this up on the uh, PowerPoint, but here's another thought. If the song is chosen for you, if someone says to you, we want you to come to this event and um, we want you to think to sing, you know, Old Man River or whatever it is. Well, you have to make sure that you're going to be able to perform it in the best way possible. So look at the range. Is the range going to fit your voice? Is it a three octave song? Not too many of us can do that. Um, so you really need to, to look at that. Is the style something that you are comfortable with? Um, something to think about. Um, and then the content of the song. Um, is it something as a Christian that you're going to be comfortable with singing? I'll tell you another story. I was invited to sing at a Christmas program many, 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 many years ago. And I had to do about six songs or so. And a couple, half were chosen for me, and half I had the opportunity to choose for myself. And there was one song in particular that was chosen for me that I just, 
it was a secular Christmas song and I have nothing against them, but the message of the song just was not, did not uh, resonate with me. And I just didn't feel as a Christian, I should be singing that. And so there was a bit of a tug of war between the two, the two of us, myself and the organizer of this event. But eventually he gave in, realizing that I was not comfortable with singing that kind of song. Now, this isn't, I'm not asking for diva behavior, nothing like that. But because we are Christians, we represent the Lord um, and we want the good, a good message to go forth, you have the right and you should make sure that what you are singing aligns with your Christian witness um, and what the Lord, what you feel the Lord would want you to do. So those are just some thoughts about how to choose a song. Okay, moving on to the next part. Any questions, any thoughts, raise your hand, maybe put it in the chat if you have any concerns or any comments that you'd like to make. We will um, be able to read those as we go on. Okay, now how to learn a song. What are the steps that I've taken that have been helpful to me in learning a song? Well, as we said before, um, it's about a message. It's about a story. So you need to read the words aloud to yourself so you can understand what the story is and um, what the message is and what you need to get across. Read the words aloud. And then speak the words in rhythm. Um, this helps you to get a, a good flow of the music and, and how the words are to be sung. Long vowel sounds, short vowel songs, and it helps with the phrasing and the breathing as well. So speak the words in rhythm. And this is all before we put any music to it. The next step is learning the actual music on a neutral syllable as such as ah, ooh, lu, that kind of thing, just to make sure musically you get your tone started and you can get through um, the melody line and learn the melody line um, in, in, a, in a beautiful way, unencumbered by the words or anything other than the melody, learning it correctly. And then practice the, um, the words on syllables. When I was in school, I went to school for music education many years ago. And at the end of my time there, I had the opportunity to take a voice class and I had a, a vo voice lessons. And I, I had a vocal teacher who for the first semester did not allow me to sing any words at all. I just sang ooh, ee, ah, oh, ooh, just syllables. And that allowed my voice um, to develop a, a beautiful tone unencumbered by the hard stops of consonants. You know, the sound happens only on the syllables. The consonants stop the sound. So just by singing on those syllables, um, I was able to connect the tones and to have beautiful tone quality um, as, I, as I was singing and learning. So if you practice the word, the, the uh, practice on the syllables alone, you'll be able to develop a beautiful tone quality. Intervals and breaks will come much more easily because you don't have the consonants stopping the sound. So it's a very technical technical uh, kind of thing, but we'll practice it in a little bit and we'll see how it goes. Then after you finish all of the vocal, uh, the, the melodic kind of training, you add the text and the dynamics. And again, you consider the message of the song and the words to, to be emphasized and the phrasing and all of those kinds of things. The next step then is to rehearse with an accompanist or your accompaniment track. And then throughout all of these steps, I advise using a mirror and then recording yourself as well. We know how we sound in our heads, um, but it is really good to hear with our ears outside of our heads what we really sound like. And it's also very important to look and see what we look like as we are performing. So a mirror and some sort of a recording device is very helpful. And then finally, if you can memorize, that is the best way to present a song because it frees you to be as expressive as possible. So those are the steps. Read the words aloud, speak the words in rhythm, learn the notes on a neutral syllable, practice on the syllables alone if you can. Very technical part of this, but if you can do that, it will lead to a beautiful um, development of tone um, within the melody line. Um, adding the text and dynamics, rehearsing with your accompanist or accompaniment, using a mirror and recording yourself, and then memorizing the song if you can. 
Okay, so we are going to now uh, look at us. the song that I've chosen for us today to learn is Psalm 91. And um, Jude is going to put that up on the screen. It is a beautiful song uh, by Major Donna Peterson. She's a wonderful musician from the Eastern Territory. She's retired now, who has written many, many, many beautiful songs uh, that are part of the Salvation Army repertoire. And um, it's based on Psalm 91, as the title says, and it is it's complete scripture. It's the first and second verses of that psalm. And it's powerful because it is the word of God. Um, and I think it's a very timely song um, for us to be looking at today um, during this time of COVID and this time of, of worldwide unrest and uncertainty. This song, the message of this song gives hope and comfort um, during these times. And uh, this song can be used in many different settings in many different parts of the meeting. It can be used um, as a call to worship. Um, so before the meeting, a preliminary music, it can be used as a special item within um, a, a meeting. Uh, it could be used before a message, prayer time, lots of different options for this song. So um, hopefully if you don't know it already, if you haven't used it, you'll be able to take it and, and use it um, in the future as a solo item. The words are simple and easy, um, so you could memorize this easily. There are not too many of the words. And the melody line, another reason I chose it is because the melody line is very simple and just very, very beautiful, very lyrical and beautiful. So you have the music up on your screen. If you're driving, please be careful, <laughs> pull over. Um, and so we're gonna go through the first step of learning a, a song. So we're gonna look at this and we're just gonna read the words aloud and see if we can understand the message of the song together. So I will lead you, we have the first page up. So let's just read it. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, and we're reading the top line, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Beautiful message, message there. And then there's a repeat, so it goes back, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So let's just unpack that a little bit. He that dwelleth, so that means he that lives, the person that lives in the secret place of the Most High. So a secret place is a special place, not maybe open to everybody, but a special place of the Most High God. The psalmist, you know, in, in ancient times, many different gods were worshipped, but the God Yahweh was known as the Most High God. So this is the message, the person that lives in that special place, um, known by the most high God, shall abide, will stay, that's what that means, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So the shadow, you're protected by the shadow of the most high, the Almighty God. Beautiful message there, right? Let's go on to the next section. Okay, let's read it together. I will say together, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. In him will I trust. And finally, in him, in him will I trust. And so there's that first statement, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, a safe place. And then it gets personal, doesn't it? All right, we, we bring that home. I will say, because I've experienced that, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge. He is my safe place. He's my stronghold, my fortress. He's my God and I'm gonna trust in him. So a statement is made and then it becomes very personalized in the second part of the song. I'm gonna say of the Lord because I've experienced that secret place. I've dwelt with him, I'm abiding in him. I know that he is my refuge and my fortress and because of that, I'm gonna trust in God. That's powerful. That's a powerful message to want to share with others, a message that people need to hear. 
So we've read the words aloud. We've, we've, um, they've entered into our hearts and our spirits and our imaginations. Um, they're resonating with us. And now we're going to move into speaking the words in rhythm. So if you could go back to the top. And some of you may actually have this. I believe it was sent out last night. So if you've printed a copy, that's fantastic. And you can look at it that way. Um, so we're going to speak the words in rhythm now, and I'll try to go a little bit slowly so that Jude has time to pull the, uh, the music up. So here we go, in rhythm. One, two, three, four. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I breathe there and I should not have done that. All right. Let's do it again. Let's go to the repeat one more time. He that dwelleth. Okay. Helping us to understand the connection of the phrasing and how long the values of the notes and how we need to sing through them. All right, in rhythm again. Ready, and he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide, shall abide under the shadow of the almighty go on i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him will i trust in him will i trust in him in him will i tr trust and it goes on there all right so the words in rhythm okay the next step now we're going to make the music with the tune exciting part here and we're going to ask carol to help us with his piano trusting that this will work okay back to the top um and this time let's try to go all the way through so we'll get to the page 39 and then we'll go to the sign yes back to page one through their second repeat and then go to the coda with the melody line are we hearing okay able to sing good okay one two and let's sing it on lou okay one two ready and lou. you sing Second ending. Now we have a little bit of an intro there. Can we go right back to five? And then we'll go to the coda and...
second ending. Let's go. Yeah. Yes. the coda. Okay. You, I hope you're, you're falling in love with the tune. If you don't know it already, it's very, very beautiful, very lyrical. Now, this is something that's very technical, and we all may not be able to do this, but if you're able to try, get, give, it, give, it a, give it a try. So I'm going to try, uh, do this, and it's going to sound a little wonky, but again, it's, it's um, the way my teacher helped me to connect a, a beautiful tone and to help to have consistency in that tone throughout a melody line. So if you would give me that E, I'm just going to do the syllables, no consonants, and you have a listen um, to the first phrase and then maybe you can um, join in uh, on the second phrase. So can I have the E there? <clears throat> okay. E Kind of weird, but it helps with the connection, right, of the beautiful melody line. You want to try it? I'll sing it. And if you have, um, if you want to, you can try that phrase with me. Okay, let's try it again. E, Harold. <clears throat> Here we go, and. Second ending. Okay, hopefully that, that will make sense to you and help, it helps you to understand the real connectivity that is really important in singing a beautiful line. Okay, so let's go on to adding the text and dynamics. If you have a pencil, and Jude's gonna help me with this. Um, before we actually sing the words, we need to look at the phrasing, we need to look at breath marks, we need to consider what words we need to emphasize more than others to make this presentation as meaningful um, and as personal as possible. So Jude, if you could put that up with your iPad, that would be great. And if you have your copies in front of you, get a pencil out and we're gonna spend just a couple of minutes marking up our copy so that um, they're just not bland notes on a page. Um, we want, so Margaret, um, we did not send the music, just so oh, you know, but we can, we, we will, right, so. Okay, after the fact, okay, that's fine. Okay. That's okay, so, if, so as he puts it up, he's gonna mark it for you, okay? I believe that is, that's the plan. There, there we go. So looking at number five, 
Um, we read through, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. Really, you think, you think about it, the thought goes on, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. But musically, not too many of us um, would be able to sing such a long phrase. Um, and so there's a breath mark put in there for us. So Judah, if you would just mark from uh, measure five, to the bottom of the page where that breath mark is, that will be our first phrase. And we sing that together without taking a breath. Um, and then, it, can you do a curvy line, a phrase line? Encompassing. Do you want it to go to all the way to where? So from five, well, go to the, can you do a curved line to the edge of that line and then bring it down to most high where the, where the breath mark is? So it's just, just a curve. I think you did it last night. <laughs> well, as he's, yeah, well, sort of. So don't worry about it. Let, let's go on. So one way, the natural place that we would want to break there, he that dwelleth, the second syllable there, eth, in between F and N, if you just put a line connecting the F and N, that means don't take a breath there. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. That's one phrase. So mark it so you don't break. You break. Shall abide, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. That's another thought. So that's another phrase. All right. Now, some of us are in different places in, in our vocal training and our abilities, and we might not be able to sustain that long of a phrase. So at the top of page 38, I would say you can take a breath in the second measure after the word abide. So we would have from the bottom of the first page, shall abide, shall abide. Then you can take a breath there if you if you need it under the shadow, but do not breathe between sh do, shadow, and of the almighty. So it's one thought shall abide, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty, all right? And that's gonna be consistent in your repeat as well. Now going back, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. If I'm singing this, I would put emphasis on a couple of words there. He that dwelleth. So you could put a little line under dwell, that first part of that word. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High. So under dwell, the first syllable of that word, and then under see, the first syllable of secret. And you might even want to lean into Most High as well. And these are just going to be subtle emphasis, emphases on these words. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide because of the interval it's going to be very natural for you to emphasize the bide so shall abide shall abide under the shadow the first syllable of shadow is another place where we can emphasize of the almighty okay just a little line under yes very nice very good all right let's move on to i will say of the lord I will say, you want to lean into say a little bit. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. And that again is one phrase. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. If you have good breath control, you can connect my God. But it might be a little difficult. If you can't do it, I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. Fortress, take a breath. My God is a phrase on its own. And then all the in hymns will I trust. In him will I trust the next one. Breath there, first one. In him will I trust. You can take breaths in, in between each of those. And then in the middle of page 39, in him, in him will I trust. We're going to sing those two together. So that's the phrasing. Okay, so that's what I would do. That makes uh, a lot of sense in terms of the lengths of the phrases. If you can't, um, 
breathe or you don't have the, the, the strength at this point to sing the four bar or the six bar, or the eight bar phrase, find a place that's logical for you to breathe, mark it, and be consistent in the way you sing it there. Okay, so let's, let's, uh, let's sing it with the accompaniment. Can we do that with the track? Cut it good. Now, I, the dynamics are there. Uh, we didn't talk about them, but it is at that point where you mark up your score that you also look at the dynamics as well. We begin at a, at a, at a mezzo piano, a nice calm place. Um, and then there, there's a crescendo there, shadow of the almighty. We grow there and then we come back down there in the first ending. Um, and then the crescendos at the top of page 39. And I will say of the Lord, you're making a declaration now. He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him will I trust. And this is a neat thing. When you're repeating the same phrase, the same words, make it interesting. And it's in there in the music already. So you get a crescendo, crescendo, and grow and grow. So that at the end, you're making a firm, bold, beautiful, forte statement of the fact that you are trusting in the Lord. Okay, very good. I trust you're sounding fabulous as you're singing there. I wish I could hear you, but thank you so much for your, your participation. Now, let's move on to presenting a song. We've learned our song. We've chosen a song. We've learned our song, gone through all of the steps. Now we have to look at how to present a song. And I'm going to um, have Jude play for you a video of... Uh, Kathleen Battle, a very famous or a favorite opera singer of mine. Um, and I want you to uh, think about what the strengths of her performance are as you watch her. Think about her entrance. How does she enter? What is strong about her entrance? Think about her expression during her performance. What's good about that? What's strong about it? How does she relate to the audience? Think about that. Think about her appearance. What does she look like? and then think about her vocal quality. And if you can, just jot down some notes or the answers to those questions in the chat, and hopefully we'll have just a few minutes to think about it and maybe have some discussion. Very quickly, she's singing an aria from an opera called Gianni Schicchi, and she is the daughter of Gianni, who is in love with the young man named Runiccio, and the two families are at odds. And so in this song, she's pleading with her dad, I love him, I wanna be with him, please let me be with him. And these are the words. O mio babino caro means, oh dear, sweet daddy. I love him, he's so handsome. I wanna to go to this place called Porta Rossi so I can buy the ring. 
I want to go there. I really love him. And if you say no, I'm going to go to the bridge at Ponte Vecchio and throw myself into the River Arno. I'm anguished. I'm tormented. Oh, God, I want to die. Daddy, Papa, have pity on me, have pity on me, have pity on me. Very dramatic. That's what opera is all about. But this is the message of the, that's the story of the aria. So you're watching and you're going to put in the chat if you can. What's strong about the way she enters? What's strong about her, her expression? How does she relate to the audience? What's good about that? What's good and strong about her appearance? And what um, do you think about her vocal quality? Okay. O mio babino caro. I see a few smiles there and we're the, the time is getting short so I'm going to share with you some of my insight and some of my reflections about the strengths of this performance and I think you can carry this on to what you will do when you present a solo very dramatic the story is very dramatic her entrance was very confident and it was very gracious I think her expression, fantastic. She was fully in character and she told the story with her body, with her voice of this very uh, uh, tragic uh, situation with this young woman who's ready to kill herself for the love of a young man. How does she relate to the audience? Well, she walks in and they're applauding. And so she bows very, very gracefully. Well, we wouldn't do that, but that's what opera stars do. She's really connected with her audience. Her appearance. She's appropriately dressed for a concert stage. We wouldn't wear that. 
but she's appropriately dressed and we need to be appropriately dressed as well when we are presenting as vocal soloists. And of course, her vocal tone was absolutely gorgeous, a beautiful tone that she's very clearly worked on and developed to its fullest. So next slide very quickly. How do we present a solo? What do we need to do? Well, we need to relax and be very, very natural. If we walk to the stage again, very gracefully and naturally, you may make introductory comments if necessary. Um, in my experience, that sometimes takes the edge, the nerves off, so that might be helpful. You wait for the audience to be quiet, and then at the proper time, you cue the accompaniment and your sound technician. You have a focus, an eye contact, don't stare straight ahead, but it would be good if you can connect with your audience by looking at them, looking up from your music. And then at the end, you acknowledge the applause or the response that is given. Gaining confidence, that's a big deal. It's not easy to stand up by yourself and put yourself on the line and, and share uh, on the musical gift that God has given to you. But as Christians, we can have an I can attitude because it says in the Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives us strength. And basically, if he's calling you to use that gift and to share a message through that gift, he will empower you to do that. Concentrate on the interpretation. It's about a story. It's not about you. It's about a message. It's about a story. So if you concentrate on, on sharing that, everything will go very, very well. Prepare thoroughly. And again, this is on the slide. Hopefully this will be able to be shared with you later. Um, have a deliberate stage presence. And think about Kathleen Battle. She walked in confidently and she did what she had to do. She did what she was called to do. And as Christian musicians, we are called to share the gospel through music. So go with the confidence of, of Christ behind you. Breathe deeply. Breathing calms your nerves, slows down your heart rate, and helps things to work carefully and properly. And then we gain experience by doing. And so I think our time is up, Harold. Is that the case? Our time is up. Um, hopefully you've been able to gain some insight into how to prepare to learn a song and to prepare it, to choose a song, and then to present it in a way that... Um, uh, is honoring to the Lord that um, shares a, a message, a story in a positive way. Um, this is a beautiful piece of music. If you're not familiar with it, I encourage you to take it with you, to learn it, and to use it um, to bring blessing to people, especially during these days. These are tough times. Psalm 91 has a fantastic message that will bring blessing and hope to others. So thank you for the opportunity. Um, it's been a pleasure. Hopefully, I'll be able to see you in person one day. God bless you. Thank you. You're Thank welcome. you, Margaret, so much for joining with us this morning. Um, Jude, I think we can bring the track up. If you don't mind, we'll do the Psalm 91 just to Great. finish. Great. Um, I'm just going to remind you to come on tomorrow. We'll have Rhonda Atwater here to really talk about how to do a gospel choir rehearsal effectively, what it's all about, the philosophy. And uh, go on tonight, early at 6.45 for tonight's program at 7. Don't forget to donate. I don't know that I want to skydive, but you can donate at donate.centralusa.salvagedarmy.org slash CMI2020. So, Jude, can we put the track up? And we thank you again, Margaret, um, for sharing. Um, there we are. Oh, he put up the... Um, yeah, no, yeah, if you just put the music back up, Psalm 91, Jude, and then play the track. Yes, that's it. Let's sing it together.
Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye, everyone. Yes.